Hey guys, my name is Tom Washington. I first want to thank you for even watching this video, man. Um, before I get started, I want to give you guys a little background of me. Um, I started off in high school, was kind of very under-recruited, didn't really take it as serious as I should have, so I had to go to junior college route. Went to one junior college, a D1 junior college in Chicago, transferred to a junior college who was Division Two. after that. Um, I had D1 offers, but my grades wasn't up to par, so I wound up going to a NCAA Division Two called New Mexico Highlands University. Uh, Red shirt in one year, played my junior year, and after that, um, I wasn't really getting the shine that I felt I deserved. You know, certain things were told to me that ultimately didn't happen, so I wound up transferring my last year to a Division One NAIA school called William Woods University in Missouri. Um, there, I couldn't play in my first semester of the season because of the NCAA guideline rules. I took an online class that didn't correlate and wouldn't go to my core GPA, so just a, just a lot. And I wound up balling out, got a whole bunch of accolades my last year. With all that being said, I still made it to the professional level. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys wonder, like, hmm, how did he do that? He transferred, he transferred, he transferred. He said his stats wasn't as good as before. He like you know, so really, it really only took me one year to do it. And I want to give you guys a couple of guidelines that I did, and hopefully it'll help you. So one, you gotta have the stats and the skill, and and more importantly, you gotta have the stats. Um, to be honest with you, I went to a smaller school, so this is geared more towards people that went to smaller universities. If you at the D one level. You know, this, not, this can pertain to you, but not so much because, you know, people at the Division One level, they do have a slight advantage. But um, with me, um, you got to have the stats at a small school. So if you go to a D2, an NAI, uh, uh, if you want to come straight out of JUCO, if you want a D3, you got to put up the stats. So nine times out of ten, you got to have some type of all-conference, all, you know, you got to make a team. Um, definitely got to average double-digit points, um, you know, Preferably, preferably, you know, around 13, 14, 15, and then above. Um, so, you know, that's first and foremost because at the end of the day, you're trying to impress or you want to stand out to the scouts or different teams in these other countries. And just because you might have game, they don't necessarily know that they have to go off stats and what they see, word of mouth and stuff. So that's first and foremost. So if you're a guy that's coming off the bench or you're a role player and stuff like that, you know, um, I'm not telling you you should – Stop your dream or give up, but you know sometimes you have to be kind of realistic with yourself. Um, so that's first and foremost. You also have to have the skill as well. Um, just know that if a system is made or is put in place for you, um, use that to your advantage. Don't try to be something that you're not. Now, with that being said, you definitely want to broaden your horizon and you know expand your game and try to work on you know as much things as possible. But you want to stick to what you're good at because nine times out of ten, if you do go overseas and you're blessed enough to do it, that's what they want you to do. Don't try to go over there and be something that you're not because that's how you get sent home. So, step number two. You have, you have to, you have to, listen to me. You have to network. Network, man. Networking is number one thing. So, for me coming out, um, I, I took pride in, like, not really asking too many people you know, like, can you help me? Because, you know, a lot of times you hear, hey, can you plug me with your agent? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you talk to so-and-so for me? And uh, that's fine. If you want to do that, there's nothing wrong with it. But me personally, I didn't do it. Um, me coming, I'm from Chicago. I'm from a big, big basketball city. So I had a lot of guys, you know, that were a year or two into their professional careers. And, you know, they easily could have helped me or assisted me or whatever and uh, with their agents, but I really didn't want to. So what I did was, and what a lot of people told me I should do, is, um, you know, find an agent. So with that being said, if you're coming from a smaller school, um, usually agents are not going to be knocking down your door trying to represent you. So sometimes you have to market yourself and do things for yourself. So what I did, I went on Facebook. Facebook is a great way to connect with different agents and different teams, and that's exactly what I did. Um, I have some, some links in the description below the different groups that I did join and hopefully it'll help. But I just basically wrote down my basketball resume profile, you know, my name, my height, my school, my stats, my film, accolades and stuff, copied and pasted, added it with my film and I just put it in every single group. I put it on my Facebook friends and families and stuff, shared it, 
um, you know, make sure you have a pretty good support system and people that really believe in you. And um, you got to do that. You really got to take some time, man, because people are not, like I said, people are not going to be knocking down. Or as soon as you put it, you're not going to, it's not going to be instant. You have to really take time and really do it. Be, you know, very, very consistent with it. You got to do it, you know, daily. Um, hit people emails. You know, you, you got you to gotta be like that girl. You really want that. You know, you, you text, you double text, triple text. You really got to do that, man, because at the end of the day, people are doing you a favor. You know, um, you're not giving anything. You know, you have to you have to take it. So networking is a big thing, man. That's how, I feel like that's, that's a big thing that a lot of people don't do because when people ask me, they ask me, how do you get an agent? How do you do this? How do you do that? And I tell them Facebook. And, uh, you know, I feel like people should be a little bit more proactive. You know, you got to sell yourself. You shouldn't rely or wait on other people to help you do something. You got to, you know, do it yourself, man. Number three is you have to market yourself. And what and it's a difference between networking and marketing. When I say about market yourself, you have to, whatever you're doing as far as pictures, videos, when it's pertaining to basketball, working out, post it, you know, let teams or agents see that you're marketable, you have a fan base, you're presentable, you know, people want to see you, you know, that wow, oh, look at him, look at him, you know, they want to take a picture, they want to, you know, follow you and, and, and see what you're doing. That's very, very, very big. So if you're posting a workout, if you're doing a dunk, if you're doing a killer crossover, record it, take a picture, post that so people can see, they can share it, you never know who might see it, you know, you might have fans, a team, an agent, like I said, just make sure you're marketing yourself. Show that agent, show that team that you're marketable. That's very, very important because if you are blessed to make it overseas, you know, when you're over there, you're a celebrity. It's like you're in their NBA. You can walk down the street, somebody can approach you, ask for a picture, ask for this, and you want to never be thrown off guard. You always want to be ready, man. So that's, that's very, very important. And for me, the last and most important step of them all is be a professional. A professional basketball player is not just basketball and skill and dunking and shooting and setting picks. It's, that's just being a basketball player. A professional is the whole package. You have to conduct yourself in a mannerly fashion. You have to, you know, speak well with proper etiquette. You know, don't be, represent your agent, yourself, and your country, and your team proudly. You know, don't go over there drinking and smoking and stuff all the time. Now, you know, if you celebrating or, you know, it's a weekend or something, don't get me wrong, you know, smoking a little hookah, having a drink if you're of age, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, it's a difference. Don't be over there, you know, doing things illegal, out of character, making yourself, your country, or your team look bad. That's not a professional. Also, you have to conduct yourself in a manly fashion. Remember that you never know who's watching you. There's kids, you know, there's people that look up to you. So you, you want to set a good example for them and set a good example for yourself because, like I said, you never know who's watching, man. And, um... I've heard a lot of stories and also seeing myself that, you know, the first three things that I stated, people did very well. Had the game, good stats, work ethic was very marketable, you know, can jump high, don't do all, you know, make the fans go hoorah, but they didn't have that professional aspect. You know, they were lazy, they were mean, they, you know, you couldn't really tell them anything, you know, and that was their downfall. You know, they, they, they thought they were better than what they were, you know, just very big headed. And, you know, that's not going to work, man. When you come over here, you really have to humble yourself because at the end of the day, like I said, it's a blessing and it's a lot of people who would love to be in your position. So just remember that, man, just be a professional and conduct yourself in a manly, in, a, in an orderly fashion. So. If you sign an agent or if you don't want to go the agent route and you're coming from a smaller school like I did, I just don't want you to expect a very, very large salary. So for me, for example, for me, um, I play the forward. I play the three, four overseas. I'm six, seven, you know, um, very versatile. I can shoot, go inside, dunk, all that, whatever. And, uh, you know, with that being said, I have a pretty, you know, good body. So I was told coming out. You know, I should expect this and that coming from a small, you know, I should expect 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, stuff like that. I'm thinking that's cool. And that's not very realistic. Coming from a, I finished, even though I played D2 ball and, you know, stuff, at the end of the day, I'm finished at, at an NAI school. And even if I was at a D2, you know, D2 is not the same as D1. So, I'm going to be honest, my first year, I went, I left and went to Bosnia. Um, I had to pay for my own flight. Um, pretty much everything else was included, meals and stuff like that, living, Wi-Fi, and I was only getting 900 a month. 
So I went from being told, hey, anywhere from two to four thousand a month to nine hundred dollars a month. And you know, sometimes you have to sacrifice and really do put the work in, prove yourself and do it because that's what you love and eventually, you know, you level up. And um it's it's definitely prideful because like I said, coming from a smaller school, teens will definitely try to test your pride and see how bad you really want it. And uh it, it definitely can hurt, man. I remember it was a couple of times, you know, I was offered three, four hundred dollars a month and stuff, and that's crazy. Like when you really think about it, you know, you have people that no disrespect, but you got people that work at fast food getting more money than that, you know. And it's even it's even cases that, you know, people look really go out there for free, you know, just because they love the game. So with all that being said, just don't expect a large lump sum of money your first year, maybe even your second year, because it's all about proving yourself. Unfortunately, even if you have the game, if you kill everybody, if you can, if you know you're better than somebody that played Division One, it's not about that, man. It's all about your resume and who you know and stuff like that, man. So just don't expect a big lump, lump sum of money. And, um... That's pretty much it, man. So if you really just follow those guidelines, I feel like you can be successful. Um, I'll have the links to my social medias below. If you have any questions, just you know, give me a follow, shoot me, a, you know, shoot me a message or whatever. I'll be happy and free to um, answer any questions. And uh, just as a bonus, I have a couple of my friends who also play professional ball overseas, um, and they will give you a couple of tips on their journey their ups and downs and things of that nature. And hopefully they can help you as well. So here you go. But before I finish, thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Toron Washington, and I hope you guys have a blessed day. Just wanted to give you guys just a couple of clips of myself before we get to the next portion of the video. So here's a couple of my highlights for my time in Armenia. Here we have Shaquille Hines out of Chicago, Illinois. Shaquille graduated from University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. And since he has played in Greece, Sweden, and he's currently in Germany right now. As you can see here, it's a couple of highlights of Shaquille. And soon after, he'll share his thoughts and tips on being a professional basketball player. Hey, what's going on? Uh, my name is Shaquille Hines, and I'm here to pretty much talk about the process of becoming a professional athlete. And um, I would say the process starts in college. Uh, if you perform well, you know, do what you got to do, take care of yourself on and off the court, you know, those agents will find you. That's pretty much what happened to me after my senior season. You know, different agents started to reach out to me. Uh, telling me they can do this and do that for me. And of course, you know, I listened to each and every one of them because um, that was honestly the hardest part about the process is picking an agent because I don't know these guys. And uh, you hear so many stories about guys lying and whatever, but I ultimately went with my gut feeling and uh, my first agent landed me a good job in, uh, in Sweden, uh, played pretty well, you know, did what I can, had good stats. And uh, moved up the ladder the next year, uh, played in Greece, and now I'm currently in Germany. You know, I'm just continuing to just build my career each and every year. You know, that's pretty much the goal. Um, you know, it's definitely a, a tough process, man, as uh, being um, overseas away from your family. You know, you definitely have to be mentally strong. But if you love basketball and uh, love what you do, you know, time flies at the end of the day. So. I would just say the process, you know, starts in college, though. For everybody out there, you know, just continue to just grind and do what you got to do, man. And, and market yourself, man, and don't quit. You know, continue to grind and continue to work. Here we have Capri Austin, also out of Chicago, Illinois. After finishing his college career at Midwestern State University in Texas, Capri started off playing in the United Kingdom. And since, he has played in Argentina, Bolivia, and he's currently in Chile right now. As you can see from his highlights, he's above the rim defensive matter type of player. And pretty soon he'll also share his thoughts and advice on being a professional basketball player. Capri Austin here. I went 
to first out of high school. I went to Northeast Community College in Norfolk, Nebraska. Then I ended up going from there to Midwestern State in Wichita Falls, Texas. Um, I had, had a pretty solid career there. Um, when it came for me to try to, when my senior came trying to get an agent, um, I had some agents hit me up on Facebook um, saying how they can help me and all those type of things. So I basically took a gamble on some agents seeing what they can give me, like what jobs they can get for me and basically just basically how i just had to play the waiting game you know i didn't get actually i didn't get my first job till late i want to say late february you know and it was only for three months but it's something that in england and it, and it was something i had to take because i needed film and only had film from college um you know so that helped me then after that i had got my uh, my set next contract for the full my but my first full contract for a full season, second league Argentina, and now currently I'm playing in first league Chile. But I mean, it's a grind, man. Um, you know, because um, everyone wants working, everyone wants to put put beat in the position you're in. You know, um, it's a tough game. Like you know, it's you got shady people out here. You it's it's hard to trust people. You know, so basically you you always you basically taking a leap of faith when when you're trying to become a pro and play basketball overseas but you always have to um you do your research on your agent like when when an agent hits you up they you they should give you their license numbers license number you know so to make sure they're official agent with FIBA and you all make sure your agent is working for you and to get the best job possible, not just getting you a consistent job, making this, making the same amount of money. Like it's, if you doing good, winning and stuff like that, you want to make more money and more money. You know, because because it's not like it's not like you receiving an NBA contract when you get multi million dollars. You know, that can set you up for life. You know, so you have to you have to stay in the gym stay networking you know always like facebook is a huge platform to help you get your pro career started because there's so many agent coaches gms that's on there they have pages and stuff like that so you like like i was constantly sending my film out you know like it's it's pages that post job openings and stuff so i was i was constantly sending my um sending my um sending my stuff out to, to gms agents or whatever trying to trying to get a job you know but the best bet is like come at finishing when you finish your school finish playing and stuff is to find an agent that you feel like you can trust you can't, it's, it's nothing wrong with going to camps or anything like that, but make sure you have an agent that with you that can, that can sell you to whether it's GMs or coaches from different teams, different countries or whatever that's there. So like, but when it comes to like the, on the court work and stuff like that, you always have to be ready. You have to stay ready because like your number can get called at any moment. Um, and it's a cold game like if you're not ready they're not looking for no player like you don't have time to just develop and be like and work into the system especially being an import player the american you know you have to be ready from the from the from the jump you know like so you always make sure you're ready stay in the gym in shape you know be be ready to play compete and that's it that's you know and last but not least, we have Reggie Johnson here. Reggie Johnson finished his college career at Hampton University after he started his career in Sweden and since has played in Spain and is currently in Hungary. As you can see, he's a crafty point guard man who is definitely known for his defense. And like the others, he's going to share some tips and just his journey and some do's and don'ts on becoming a professional basketball player.
Hey, what's up now? How y'all doing? Reggie Johnson. Um, I want to tell y'all a little bit about the process of getting overseas and um, what it took to get here. Um, I graduated from Hampton University, went to Miami, Ohio the first two years, finished out at Hampton University. And um, the process to getting overseas pretty much started, I'll say around January or February of my senior year. And, you know, it starts pretty much on the closing. And I think the main thing that people forget about, the main objective and the main priority should be to make sure you handle your business on the court. And then from there, you know, you're going to have agents contacting you, trying to, you know, pitch their bid in before the season starts. And once the season ends, I mean, it's really fair game from there. And I think that process from there goes into, you know, having a good core people that you trust, you know, probably the same people that you went to to help you make your college decision and you try to go through these agents and these decision making process to figure out what's best for you and be realistic with yourself. I think that's the main thing, being realistic with yourself and being straight up brutally honest about your goals and your aspirations for yourself um, to these different agents that will be trying to get you. And then from there, you work through a process, you usually get an agent first year out of college. You know, he set things up for you, whether it's uh, pro days or whether it's uh, going somewhere to train or whether it's you staying and whatever you're comfortable with in training and while he's doing his leg work and working his avenues and um, getting you prepared on the political stage in the process of him and getting you to these different um, teams that's in Europe or whether it's the G League or whether you're a prospect playing the NBA. You know, it's all about um, whatever your realistic situation and whether your future is heading and what direction you need to go in because everybody's on levels and everybody's uh, college career is going to set them up to take the next step at a different level. So I think the main thing is being realistic, uh, being honest, and uh, finding the best representation for you and fitting for what you believe that your direction, your career should be going in.